Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify, Apple, or Google, please leave a five-star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, we got breaking news. Grayscale has won their lawsuit against the SEC. Another big fat L for Gary Genser. So here, Eleanor Toretta Fox Business reported a DC Court of Appeals has granted Grayscale's petition for review to convert its GBTC trust into a Bitcoin spot ETF and has ordered the SEC's order to be vacated. Documents and detail to come. Folks, this is great news. Gary Genser and the SEC take another big fat L. And it's not that we want them uh, inherently to take L's, but rather they are corrupt. We've been talking about it. I've been calling Gary Genser a scumbag regulator because he is a puppet on strings being controlled by the trap by incumbents who have been trying to kill crypto startups like Coinbase, Ripple, Grayscale, and he's been weaponized. That is not what the SEC should be doing. They're supposed to be protecting investors, but they have become political. I've said it before. They've become rotten at their core. It's disgusting. They're using taxpayer dollars to do these things. And Gary Genser should be fired. He should resign today. And we got to put the pressure, folks. But this is a big victory following, obviously, the Ripple victory and XRP victory. And we're waiting for Coinbase to have a victory as well. And I think Gary's going to have to resign. He's going to be taking some of the biggest L's in the history of the SEC. Um, here, uh, Eleanor Tourette highlighted what Michael Sonnenschein, who's the CEO of Grayscale, said a few weeks ago. He sa She said, when Sonnenschein came on Fox Business with Liz Clayman a few weeks ago, he told us he was confident that Grayscale had dotted their I's and crossed their T's in their appeal. And she said, looks like the court uh, thought so, too. Um, here's a, a quick snippet. Grayscale has demonstrated its proposed Bitcoin ETP is materially similar across relevant regulatory factors to the approved Bitcoin futures ETPs. First, the underlying assets, Bitcoin and Bitcoin futures are closely correlated. And second, these surveillance sharing agreements with the CME are identical and should have the same likelihood of detecting fraudulent or manipulative conduct in the market for Bitcoin and Bitcoin futures. Folks, we know what this is about. We know the spot ETF should have been approved a long time ago. SEC Commissioner Hester Purse has said this. It's the same structure that exists for the futures. Gary is, you know, he loves futures ETFs. He approved a 2X leverage uh, futures ETF. He approved a shorts ETF, but why not a spot ETF? That's because his buddies, BlackRock and Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan hadn't filed their application yet. But we saw right away BlackRock did it about a few months ago or a couple months ago. And then, uh, you know, I think they were anticipating the loss here. So Gary's getting exposed. Here is another excerpt from uh, the ruling. The denial of Grayscale's proposal was arbitrary and capricious because the commission failed to explain its different treatment of similar products. Exactly. You know, we, I've been seeing it for a long time. The courts is where we're going to win, right? It's where Gary Genser is going to be exposed, his corruption, his lies, and all the nonsense. This guy needs to resign. And this news is getting covered by Bloomberg, uh, Fortune. So it's making the mainstream press. And that's not a good thing for Gary. I've often talked about the optics are not looking good for Gary. A lot of Democrats are distancing themselves from him. And that's key because he's Democrat appointed, right? Um, I'm going to give you a quick excerpt of what uh, Bloomberg is reporting. They said Grayscale Investments LLC got a green light from a federal court to launch the first Bitcoin exchange traded fund in the US, a watershed moment in the crypto industry's quest to tap billions of dollars from everyday investors. A three-judge appeals panel in Washington on Tuesday overturned a decision by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission to block the ETF, essentially. So I can't read the full thing because Bloomberg wants me to pay. Uh, same thing with Fortune, but I think you all get the gist of it. And I just tweeted out, folks, Grayscale has beaten the SEC, another big fat L for scumbag regulator Gary Genser. Ripple XRP took a big victory, and now we need Coinbase to join the victory party as well. As I've been saying, we will win in the courts and expose corrupt Gary Genser. So, uh, folks, we got to keep fighting, keep pushing. Um, and remember, just in yesterday's podcast, I talked about the SEC had to comment on six different Bitcoin spot ETFs, which included 
BlackRock, Bitwise, VanEck, Wisdom Tree, Fidelity, Invesco, and so forth. So I'm assuming their approvals are around the corner because as I've been saying for months, Gary will try to bury this news that he took another L by approving these ETFs. That's personally what I think. I could be wrong, but I think we've seen his political games and how he tries to change a narrative, right? He's made the SEC very political. Once again, they're not, uh, they're fallen far from their core mission of looking to protect investors. It's it's a shame. And look, we know what happened with Bill Hammond and Jake Clayton with Ethereum. It's a mess. The SEC needs to be revamped. Uh, I can't believe my tax dollars are going to this. It's unbelievable. But folks, this is why we got to keep fighting. Contact your rep representatives. Use social media. Make content. Retweet the facts. Expose Gary Genser, right? Anytime he tweets out any anything there, I'm there to ratio his tweets with facts of, of the SEC breaking the law and much more. Our voices are being heard. And once again, the SEC can't do any of this bullshit in front of the judges and the judicial branch, right? They, they're going to get exposed, folks. And uh, we're moving in the right direction here. I think this will help Congress to act faster. We know there are a few bills in the House which need to be obviously voted on. But I think as the news spreads, right, as we keep amplifying it, all the, the members of Congress are going to you know, wake up to this and see, OK, we got to do something here because this agency is taking a big uh, loss, loss after loss after loss. And Gary is looking like a fool that he is uh, corrupt to the bone. And uh, folks, we have social media to our advantage. Use it. If you're not on Twitter, go on Twitter. Uh, you don't have to necessarily tweet on anything. You can just retweet. Those things help uh, to get the message out there. It's important. And look, our representatives are on Twitter, right? Members of Congress and regulators. Even Gary himself is on there. So we got to use it to our advantage. But folks, huge win for the market. Uh, a Bitcoin spot ETF is incredibly bullish. They have to be settled in physical Bitcoin. So it's not futures. They, it is not paper. It has to be settled in physical Bitcoin. And a ton of capital is going to flow into the market. We're going to see retirement accounts and much more. Registered investment advisors will be able to put their clients' funds. Their wealth managers will be able to put their clients' funds in the spot ETFs, folks. Uh, I'm very bullish. I think this will help drive the price of Bitcoin to new all-time highs in the upcoming bull market. I think we may see a rally off this news. Uh, I think Bitcoin right now is rallying a little bit, but um, there's not going to be like tomorrow, there's not going to be a flow of capital coming to the market. They have to launch this product, right? And then market it and set up the pipelines and do their due diligence. So please, please understand, if you look at the goal chart, when a Bitcoin spot ETF was approved, it didn't pump right away. It took um, you know a while and then you saw a massive surge. So just set your expectations correctly. Um, you know, Some people are going to be like, oh, the price must go to 100,000 next week. No, that's not how it works because we are still in a macro environment that's tough with liquidity, rate hikes, and much more. So please set expectations. I like to look at it as we're building the on and off ramps. We're building the infrastructure for takeoff, right? Before a rocket can go to space, uh, there's so many things that have to go in into place, right? There's so many checks. There's so many infrastructure items. So think of it that way. There's a lot of prep work that has to happen here, but- Folks, I mean, the stage is being set for an epic bull market and bull runs uh, coming up in 2024, 2025, in my opinion. And uh, I think we're going to see incredible, incredible runs with you know the likes of BlackRock and some of the biggest names in the world here. Uh, it's incredibly bullish. Anyway, folks, let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Share this video. Hit the five-star rating on the podcast platforms. And uh, quick word from our sponsor, and that is Uphold. Uphold is a great exchange. You can go buy Bitcoin, XRP, Ethereum, whatever you want on here. I've been using them since 2018. They're trusted. They have 10 plus million users, 250 plus cryptocurrencies, and they're available in 150 countries. You can also trade precious metals like gold, silver, and much more on here, and you can transfer them between uh, between metals and crypto. So that's a pretty unique feature. So if you'd like to learn more, please visit the link in the description. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.